Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. This week, I have an extremely practical podcast for you, and I'm calling it 12 Ways to Survive a Breakup. Now this will apply to some degree for a divorce, a breakup, even the end of a close friendship. These are things that people do come in to my office to talk about. So I put them together for you and I hope you don't need them, but these are 12 steps, 12 ideas in case you do need them or someone that you care about. I would ask that if you're enjoying these principles that I've been sharing, would you consider picking up one of my books on Amazon. If you've been listening to my podcast, you know I have two devotional books, one called Sheep Hear His Voice and one called Insights into Faith, a workbook also called Life Without Baggage that will help you find greater emotional freedom and peace, a Bible study, and two books that will help you with personal coping and understanding distortions and understanding yourself. So consider picking up one of those for yourself or a friend. So let's get into today's episode. So let me say that after uh, the loss of a relationship, a breakup, even sometimes a close friendship, you might feel like you are never going to be the same again. But I want to encourage you that you will. It may take time. And the things that I'm going to suggest will help smooth the process somewhat for you. Some things just take time, but there are some potholes that people fall into. So I'm going to try to steer you around those so that you can keep moving forward through the loss, through the pain of rejection, through the changes that we go through after the loss of an important relationship. So one of the first things I encourage people to do is to make a list of the 10 worst things that they did that hurt you, that discouraged you, that made you feel bad, that were selfish, unkind. And the reason that you're doing that is when we go through a loss, many times there's this tendency to kind of idealize the relationship, that it was all good, that it was all wonderful. And sometimes we need reminded that it wasn't all good because otherwise we can get stuck kind of rehearsing the happy memories. And it's not that you want to throw out the happy memories, but at first you might need this list. And then when you start to really feel bad, really miss the person, it might be useful to review the list, especially if you're trying to avoid contact, which is usually necessary. So again, the second point is that there is a tendency when the other person makes the decision to end a relationship to focus on how wonderful they were. And Everybody has strengths and weaknesses. So we want to, again, have that list so that we can remind ourselves of the things that didn't work for us, sacrifices that we made, ways that we adjusted for them, maybe in a way that wasn't even good for us. So we want to be realistic. 
and avoid that trap of idealizing who that person is. You see that a lot after a death, but it's it's more normal and it's not necessarily dysfunctional when after a person passes away, we focus on the good things about them, we celebrate the good things about them. That that's way more normal and, and it's it's mostly good for people. But when when there's a divorce, a breakup, something that happens that's kind of violent against our souls, then we want to make sure that we are not expending a lot of energy rehearsing how it used to be. The third suggestion, which I often have people do in my office, is write a letter that you are not going to send. And let me repeat, you are not going to send this. This is more of a journal exercise. It's to help you process the pain, any anger, any confusion. The tendency is to want to contact the person to talk about these things. And that is generally pretty destructive. If there's a divorce, if there's a breakup, continuing to try to interact with the person is usually not going to be good for you. So this is a journal exercise. If you really feel the need to share it with someone, maybe you share it with a friend who you trust and that you can talk to, but do not send it. Don't post things about it on your social media. You want to respect yourself as you process the pain. The more public that you make things, the more disrespect you're showing to yourself. And the people around you will probably figure out what happened. I find that a lot of times in a relationship, people have blinders on. And to some degree, that's good, whether it's a partner or a child or even a really good friend. We can tend to have some blinders. But we don't want to keep those blinders on when the relationship ends, especially if it ends against against our wishes. So we want to be realistic and we want to respect ourselves and present ourselves in a way where we're not going to regret later, oh my goodness, I made such a fool of myself. You don't want to do that. The other thing I remind people is it takes at least six months to start to see any of the flaws in a romantic partner. Now, if you see it sooner than that, that is really a bad sign. But it it takes a good six months of regular contact to really start to see what the other person is about. A normal person gives you the best up front. I kind of make the joke, you know, men put on their best uh, social skills, their most polite, attentive behavior. Women, they put on their best makeup, their nicest clothes, maybe spanks, whatever, to maximize your appeal. So men do this, women do this. But over time, you start to see who the real person is, how they really do life. And if you're in a long distance relationship, it takes longer to see. If you're involved with a person who travels a lot, again, it may take longer to see some of these things. But eventually over time, we all have flaws, we all have weaknesses. And eventually over time, you see the real person. The fifth point that I make Uh, especially regarding breakups and uh, divorce, is that uh, physical chemistry is not the same as love. We have this idea, especially in America, in Western culture, that romance is love. Now, romance is great. Infatuation, it feels great. It's, it's It's like a drug. You know, there's an old song by Roxy Music, love is the drug. So, There's something to that. There are chemicals that are released when we're attracted to another person, but that is not the same as love. Sooner or later, the infatuation wears off. And that, again, is when you start to see the real person. Infatuation can last, I think, 18 months to three years. If it wears off sooner than that, 
that might, you know, that could be just a difference in personality. But do not mistake need or sexual attraction for love. They actually are different things. So if you're having trouble letting go, I just did a series on trauma bonds and attachments. Those episodes might be useful for you if you need to, if you want to maybe assist the process of breaking that tie on a spiritual level, on an emotional level. Today, I'm focused on the practical steps. The other thing you want to think about is if you have a tendency towards some kind of addiction, whether it's like romance addiction, relationship addiction, uh, the, the physical responses to being involved with a person, then that is another difficulty that can interfere with seeing a relationship realistically and grieving. So I do have a video on relationship addiction on my YouTube channel, and you might want to review that to see whether what you're reacting to and your level of need, your level of grief, just in case, if this is your tendency to really crash after a relationship ends. That might be relationship addiction, and you want to build your sense of self. You want to use your supports. And I'm probably going to do several episodes on building a sense of confidence and self-acceptance because this, this is such a challenge for people in this day and age. The seventh point in how to survive a breakup is you need to know And it's good to decide that you can get over anyone. It it will feel like you'll never be the same. And you might grieve for a year, a year and a half. It is like a death. But if you try to hold on to someone who has decided that they're finished for whatever reason, then you are going to like rip the scab off every time you try to have contact with them. And it prolongs the pain. And oftentimes you will feel worse every time you see them. So it's it's really good to limit your contact and decide if this is over, if they have closed the door, then you want to practice self-respect and you want to do what you need to do to begin that grieving process and start to move forward. You don't want to try to hold on to someone who has let go. It's a lack of respect for yourself. Number eight, I want to remind you that people who lie or people who cheat, they don't change. So however they treated you, if they cheated on you, if they lied to you, then that's what the next person is going to get too. That's who they are. So some people think about, you know, if they're, X has already moved on. Sometimes people move on really fast because they don't really attach properly. They don't really have the capacity to love in in a way that you and I would call love. So just remember, whoever the next person is, they're going to get the same treatment that you got sooner or later. So number nine, the next thing that you want to understand and the next aspect to being able to move through the loss or a breakup is that there are people that don't bond properly. They don't really attach. They use other people. They maybe flatter and charm to get started, but then they don't have the skills. They don't have the depth to maintain a relationship. And so there's a good chance that if you're going through a divorce or a breakup, unless you did something horrific, then maybe this person is not really capable of maintaining a meaningful relationship. Maybe for them, it's as soon as it stops being fun, as soon as there's a little bit of a challenge, that they're not capable of a really deep, meaningful connection that can survive the ups and downs of life. And a person who can't stick with you if you get sick, 
if you have a financial setback. Again, unless you're doing something horrendous, then it's important to understand there may be something missing in the other person. Chances are it has very little to do with you. Number 10, avoid looking at their social media, avoid texting them, calling them, trying to ask questions, trying to get more information, trying to confront them. You really want to limit that. If it's, again, if it's over, you want to let go. If you try to contact them, they may not respond to you. If they do respond, they're probably going to say something that's going to make you feel worse. They're going to blame you. Um, It doesn't seem to go well. So you want to avoid contact and you want to avoid checking out their social media to see what they're doing. Number 11 is the more trouble, the more pain that that a person has caused you, the less that it makes sense for you to try to hold on to them. So there may have been some good times. There may, I'm sure there were some good things. But again, we don't want to live in the past. So when you're ready, you might want to start getting rid of things that remind you of them. Maybe not everything. But there might be some things you don't want to keep if it's going to intensify your pain. Or put it away for a while. Um, when I go through a breakup, I do reevaluate. Are there things I want to get rid of? And sometimes there are. There are some things I've kept. They don't bother me. They don't stir up all kinds of pain and emotion. And so you, you might want to take inventory after a little while about maybe I don't want this picture anymore. Maybe it, I don't want this jewelry anymore. Um, but you you might want to think about if there are things maybe you you don't want to keep. Number 12, obviously you want to use your supports. Now, your friends might get tired after a while of hearing things. And so many people find an online support group. There are a lot of them now so that you can talk with other people. You can see what other people are going through. So For a while, that might be useful. Now, if you're there a long time, if you start to develop kind of a victim mentality, if that group feeds a victim mentality or hatred of the opposite sex, that might not be a good group for you. But as much as you can, use your supports. Don't just stay home by yourself. Uh, Try to do things. Try to stay active. Develop a hobby if you don't have one, but you want to stay connected to other people. And it takes a while before you start to feel like yourself again. And a lot of things will remind you of the other person, but you don't want to let that stop you from living life. And you'll have to figure out the timing. I, I think I shared a while ago that there I went through a pretty difficult breakup I was devastated for a while. That's that's normal. And there were some things that reminded me of uh, the other person. And some of it I had to stay away from for quite a while. Other things, it was like, I just felt like, okay, it's time to take this back. And I, I did a podcast on that, I think, on taking things back. So there, there are things that are important to you. They were important to you before that other person. So don't let them steal those aspects of your life that give you joy. As you're ready, get back into them. But you want to, as much as you can, keep moving forward. Don't let that experience, don't let that loss define you. And I just want to repeat, if you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, you want to see your doctor or a mental health specialist immediately. You will get through this, but you don't want to take your pain out on yourself and you don't want to take it out on another person. So I'm going to mention a couple of mistakes that people make. So women tend to make the mistake that 
they say they want closure. And so they want to keep talking to their ex. They want to keep like asking questions. And whatever you know, whatever you don't know, that's probably as much as you're going to get. And so more information isn't necessarily going to bring closure. What brings closure is the grief process. So there's this idea that more conversation is going to make you feel better. And it probably won't. In fact, it will probably make you feel worse. And I would say the mistake men make is it's sort of the same thing, but it borders on stalking where you start showing up where they work, where you wait for them in the parking lot or at their apartment. And you don't want to do that. You will scare the other person And then you're going to create more problems for yourself. So again, whether you're male, whether you're female, whatever your situation, if you try to hold on to a person who has closed the door, you're going to make yourself feel worse. And it's it's a form of disrespect to yourself. It hurts, but you can get over this loss. The other thing I would say is learn what you can about yourself Without blaming yourself, try to understand, okay, what do I need to notice? What do I need to understand about how I do relationships? This isn't so you can beat yourself up over any mistakes you made. We're all human and we're all going to make mistakes. And there are aspects of relational uh, connections that none of us are going to be good at everything. But you want to learn what you can. If you tend to jump into relationships too fast, if you tend to commit yourself too quickly, then those are things you want to learn and you want to learn how to pace yourself, how to communicate, how to have boundaries. And I have all kinds of resources for you. So learn what you can and take care of yourself and use your supports. So I'm going to have links to to useful resources. And I'm going to remind you that Psalm 34 says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. So he's with you. You can use your faith to help you move forward too. So let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you that you love us unconditionally, that you never reject us, that you never get tired of us. So I pray that those who are going through a difficult loss, a a sense of rejection, a sense of devastation from a change or a loss, I pray that the suggestions we've talked about today will help them move forward without getting stuck, that you will guide them to the supports, that you will help them interrupt any needless regret, any irrational sense of guilt or blame for things not working out and that they could deepen their connection to people who love them and to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is Dr. Tony Cooper and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, would you share it with a friend? Talk to you next time and we're gonna start looking at self-acceptance.